Hi, everyone. Thank you for taking the time uh, today to join us for our first webinar um, for Give 828. I would love it if you could just let us know in the chat um, who you are, what organization you're representing today, and um, we'll let it get started in a minute. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for writing in the chat. I love just seeing, you know, where everyone is from. It's so fun having just a national kind of event um, and seeing just all the different locations is very cool. So thank you again for taking the time out of your day to join us for the Give A28 webinar one, uh, all about getting started. Um, we have a bunch of stuff to cover today, but I am going to first just pass it over to Nema, who is with Young Black and Giving Back Institute, to say hello, um, and then we'll get going. Hello, everyone. So excited to see where everyone is from and to have you all here on our first um, webinar and to kickstart um, this year's Give Aid to Aid. Um, my name is Nema, and I'm the program consultant with Young, Back and, Young Black and Giving Back. And I have been working um, on this event, this campaign, for the last three years. So really excited for this year. We have some great prizes, um, some great incentives for donors and, and, and organizations. Uh, and we expect it's gonna be a really great event. So excited to have you all here. And uh, yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. Um, and so just, I am, oh, oh sorry, hey. Ebony, are you there? Hey. hey, yes, just wanted to say hey to everybody. Awesome. Um, thank you all for being here. We are so excited. Um, this is indeed our sixth year doing this, uh, and so, um, wait, can you guys hear me? Sorry, I think I lost audio. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yes. Um, just want to say we are so excited um, and, and very grateful uh, for each and every one of you being here. Um, I know we have some return folks, we have some new folks, um, but we hope that our intention for this day is so that we can raise the awareness about your mission and the work that you all do. Uh, and you have 15 hours um, to celebrate yourselves and be able to fundraise. Um, the other fun thing about this year is that we are focusing on um, what happens after Give 828. And so stay tuned for that. But for right now, it's time to get started. So thank you to our partners at Mighty Cause. Thank you to all of our partners this year that are going to be joining us. Um, we look forward to um, having you and working with them and hope you all get to win some fun cash prizes. So. Um, I won't spoil all of the all the secrets, but I just want to wish you all the best and tell you all that we are thankful and excited for you. Awesome. Um, and I am Sarah, so I am the project manager for Give E28 this year, um, and I'm with Mighty Cause, and we are the platform provider for the event. Um, so let's get started. So our agenda today is to pretty much go over kind of the Give E28 basics. Um, if you're new, we will let you know kind of how a giving day works. If it's brand new to you, if you're a, you know, a repeat participant, um, we'll let you know on the specifics for this year's event. Uh, and then we'll go over kind of your organization profile. We're going to really focus on, you know, what it looks like when you have a completed profile um, and why it's so important when donors are deciding whether or not to give. Um, and then we'll go over some new features and resources that are available to you, and then we'll finish with a Q&A. So if you do have questions, please feel free to send them over on the Q&A button on Zoom. 
Um, you can also send them through on chat, but I, I am going to try to monitor as best I can. So most likely we'll, we'll tend to them uh, at the end of the presentation. Um, so the basics for the event, uh, before we kind of get into the very specifics for this year's Give A28, I kind of wanted to talk briefly about Giving Days and just what they have to offer you. Um, so essentially, if you're new to Giving Days, it's one day of just supercharged philanthropy. So we're basically bringing together, you know, nonprofits across the country uh, and donors across the country to give um, during one day on August 28th. Um, we hold it on an online platform, so it's created for just, you know, high volume uh, giving, so a lot of online donations. Um, hopefully, you know, you're going to be able to reach new donors by having an online platform and presence. Um, and then uh, we're working hard to, you know, secure prizes and uh, have different kind of pieces of the event that make it very exciting for donors and for you to participate so there's all sorts of prizes that are going to be um, kind of details really soon but basically you're using those prizes to create momentum to talk to your donors to come up with a strong campaign what are you fundraising for how can you utilize these prizes um, to kind of you know secure more funds during the day and then it's also a great opportunity to engage sponsors. Maybe you've never worked, you know, with sponsors in the community before or talked to businesses on how they can support you. This is all, you know, a great talking point for you to start to kind of think about how you want your campaign to look and even to put up challenges for yourself. Maybe you've never done peer to peer fundraising before. This is a great opportunity for you to try that out. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Nema so she can go over the uh, basics for this year. So Give Aid to Aid is a purely online um, campaign, fundraising campaign, and we do all the fundraising on the giveaidtoaid.org website. Um, and the Young Black and Giving Back Institute has been hosting Give Aid to Aid now for six years, so this is our sixth year. And we've had different um, we've, we've we've had different iterations of this event, but for this year it will be a fifteen hours um, of giving on the on August twenty eighth um, online, and early giving will start the Monday Monday August twenty first. So that means that donors can start donating from August twenty first to uh, contribute to the final um, giving day on August twenty eighth. Um, registration is required to participate. This means that you have to register your organization on the Give Aid to Aid website. And if you are approved, meaning that you meet the eligibility requirements, then um, you will proceed um, to fundraise on the platform. And we'll talk a little bit about um, how to set up your page and how to actually fundraise on the platform. But um, in terms of if you if you haven't registered yet, this is the first step to go on the Give Aid to Aid website, um, register your organization. Um, once you've been approved, proceed with the next steps. And to be considered eligible, you have to be a Black-led and Black-benefiting organization. This meaning that at least half of your staff and board has to be um, made up of individuals who identify as Black. Um, as give as young black and giving back as the host, we uh, obviously work with Mighty Cause to create the platform and and make sure that all all the resources are available. But we also work with partners to have prizes on the day. So we will announce more details about the prizes and then um, the different prizes will be available throughout the giving day. But there will be prizes, incentives for um, for your donors, for your supporters but also um, for, you know, to encourage you as organizations to fundraise on the day. Um, and in the past, you know, prices have been, um, have ranged from most dollars raised at a certain hour. So kind of like, incur and then you, prices were around anywhere between 100 to $500, um, just encouraging organizations that have raised the most money um, during a certain time. We also have most unique donors. So if you have, um, you know, a different, you have many donors, but maybe not the most money raised um, and different incentives like that. So we'll announce the full price list, but prizes um, are available. And this year, 
I don't know if I can say it yet, but it could be anywhere up to $10,000 available in prize money and other incentives from partners. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Ebony, do you have anything to add? Nope, you got it all covered. Awesome, sounds good. Um, so first things first, what does your organization need to do in order to participate um, and have a successful giving event? Um, like Nemo was saying, you need to be registered and approved to participate for Give 828 by August 14th. Um, and then once you are registered, you can start to go to your organization page. You're gonna fill out and update your profile. So whether you are a brand new participant needing to add you know, your logo and, and your mission and all of that good stuff, or if you are a recurring kind of previous participant and you need to come back and just refresh the content. So make sure you know the dates are for 2023 uh, and not you know last year's dates. Maybe you have you know a new campaign message, new photos. You basically want to refresh your page. Um, you can also access the nonprofit toolkit, which has a ton of additional support materials. Um, there's templated emails, there are social media resources. Uh, we've done what we can to try to take some of the lift off of you because you have a lot to work on. So definitely make sure you use those templates. Um, and then you'll want to start to really plan your campaign, uh, which, you know, our next webinar is on August 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern, and that's going to be more focused on campaign strategy and tips. But briefly here, you're going to want to start to think about what are your goals? What is your message? You're going to want to start figuring out how you can broadcast that message using your communication networks, your email, your social media. Um, you'll also want to start to think about matching grants. So if you're new to matching grants, um, we have a ton of tools, resources to help you learn about them. Uh, but starting to think about who you can approach to uh, provide a matching grant, because these are very enticing to donors. They encourage them to give. Um, and then you can also start thinking about how you're going to utilize peer to peer fundraising uh, and just really overall be engaged, have fun, set goals for yourself. Uh, giving events are a great opportunity for you to uh, work on things that might be challenging to you. Uh, you all are busy, you know, throughout the year. So setting small goals, whether that's, hey, we've never tried peer to peer fundraising. I want to try that this year. Uh, maybe you don't do matching grants and you focus on peer to peer because that's all the capacity you have. Um, so whatever that looks like for your organization, start thinking about uh, how you are going to best utilize the opportunity of participating and give eight to eight. Um, so accessing your page, we're pretty much going to talk about how you log in and how you register. Um, to access your organization page, you're going to go to the give eight to eight.org site and you're going to click log in in the top right corner. Um, you can log in using Google or Facebook or the email address you used when you set up your account. Um, once logged in, you're going to be able to see under your name, there's a drop down menu of the organization uh, or organizations you are managing. Um, if you are brand new and you don't have a user account, uh, you can create one or you can also just click register and by registering, um, it will prompt you to create an account. So it's kind of an all in one, uh, you know, you're claiming admin, you're setting up an account and you're registering your organization to participate, which is really nice. Um, our Mighty Cause support team handles the review and approval of admin requests. Typically, I would say two to three business day turnaround. Um, often it takes, you know, some time to approve admins in case you have like a Gmail account or something. Often our team will ask for just, you know, some verification because you do have access to sensitive donor data. Um, so just FYI, so you're aware. But the registration process is incredibly easy. Um, it's a short form. Uh, it'll prompt you to find your organization name. You can use your EIN. Uh, it's a very easy setup. Um, there is a participation fee of $25 per organization. Um, if you are a new participant, like Nama was saying, fill out the eligibility questionnaire first. Uh, the Young Black Giving Back Institute, their team is going to be reviewing, making sure you're eligible, and then you can go ahead and submit the actual registration form on the site. Uh, if you have previously participated in the past two years, so 2022 or 2021, and you still meet the terms, go ahead and register. Um, if you took a break, you know, and you haven't participated, uh, and the last time you participated was before 2021, you'll want to refill out the eligibility questionnaire so that the YBGB team can still review, make sure you still qualify. 
They will notify you and then you can go ahead and register your organization. Um, registration, you'll want to be registered and approved to participate no later than August 14th. Um, all right, so getting started. Um, once you have logged into your page on that slide, I showed you how to log in. Um, and once you are approved as an admin for your organization, you can click your drop down name menu and you can go to your organization page on the Give828 site. Um, on the left hand side of your dashboard, you're going to see a beautiful menu of lots of different tools. Uh, you'll see your overview, which includes your to do list, which I have right here. These are kind of uh, required steps. You don't have to set up EFT. We strongly encourage it. So it is listed under required. Uh, but basically, e setting up EFT allows you to get disbursements twice a month uh, rather than once a month by check. Um, so there's your organization page, which we're going to kind of go into more details. This is the space where donors are going to see your page. They're going to see you, your story, your mission statement, any photos you want. This is going to be where you're going to want to really craft a strong message. What are you fundraising for your campaign this year? Uh, what do you want donors to do? What do you want donors to know? Um, then you have your fundraising tools, which includes all, you know, the fun tools like peer to peer campaign management, setting up matching grants, all of that good stuff. Your reports are very robust. We have, you know, a bunch of different reports that are available to you. This is where you can find all the donor data after the event. Um, and if you previously participated, this is also the section where you can pull retention reports, which will be very useful for you. Um, those reports you'll be able to pull, you'll be able to see who gave during your 2022 campaign, who hasn't donated during the 2023 campaign, so that'll be very valuable data. Um, your checkout, this is where you can go to customize your checkout experience. Uh, definitely check that out. Um, this is where you can, you know, add, you know, different uh, kind of values for donors. So you can say, you know, here you, are, you can optionally donate $25 and this is what it does for organization. Or if you'd optionally, you know, donate $100, here's what it does. Um, you can also customize your thank you message. And then we also have a settings section where you can add additional admins, sign up for your EFT, uh, and just kind of review your general settings as well. Um, so getting into really kind of the goal today is talking about what a completed profile looks like. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do once you log in, you can see this beautiful menu right here. You're going to want to customize your page. Um, so you can see I'm scrolling through. There's a bunch of beautiful sections, a lot of opportunities for you to tell your story on your page. You'll want to customize the look and feel. Make sure it stays on brand with you. You can choose colors. Um, you can set the color of your donate button so that it stays kind of true to your organization's brand. Um, you'll want to update, upload your logo if you're brand new. This is the logo that's going to show in the search on the Give828 website, and it's also going to show up on the leaderboard. So make sure you have your logo added. You'll also want to upload a banner image. Your banner is a great opportunity. I mean, a strong image is going to really hook people into your page uh, and kind of tell your story as well. So find a strong image. Uh, maybe it's volunteers doing work or maybe, you know, it's, um, you know, employees or your board members all cheering, whatever kind of look you go for. Uh, this is a great opportunity. You can see the banner right behind the logo. Um, and if you don't have any images or you're overwhelmed, you can go ahead and also just choose kind of pre-selected images that we have in the gallery for you. Um, and just, you know, take the time to really fill out your page. So this is an example of a completed profile. Um, this is on just the regular MightyCon site, but basically you can tell this is a very engaging uh, organization page and having an engaging organization profile is going to definitely influence the donor's decision to give. Um, you know, having a strong, you know, your mission statement, having video, having images, maybe the history of your organization. Um, the more information you put on here, the more complete your profile looks and the more engaged you are on the Give 28 Giving Day. Um, you probably have, you know, a bunch of donors who are already familiar with your organization, but by participating in the Give 28 Giving Day, you have the ability to connect with brand new donors as well. 
um, donors who might be, you know, donors of other organizations, but they're looking to support someone new, they're able to find and search and filter uh, and find new organizations to give to. So this is pretty much your, you know, your resume, your LinkedIn profile type of thing. This is where you get to say what you want and kind of convey to a donor why they should give to your organization. So uh, we always encourage, you know, headlines, adding additional text, you know, breaking up the flow of information is really important because you have a lot that you do. Um, and often, it's challenging to decide what's important. So when you're considering building out your profile, uh, think of it as if you were a donor. What information is the most important to convey to them in at the quickest, you know, in the quickest, most simplest format? Pictures and videos definitely going to help. Um, you can also see that there's a featured campaign section. Uh, so if you have, you know, a featured, you know, peer-to-peer -peer campaign that you want to highlight, you can also just show all the peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. Um, you can also enable a gallery of images on your page. Uh, one thing that's really cool that um, we, we did have last year, but I want to kind of emphasize again, you have the ability to have an additional tab on your organization profile page. So this one, the about, is the first landing page, um, but there is a lovely little tab. This, for example, says Giving Tuesday. Um, so or donors can click between the two pages. So it's a great way to break up your content. Um, your you know additional custom tab can be used to uh, you know talk about specific Give 828 fundraising goals. Um, your about can be more about who you are as an organization, so that you can highlight the goals on the second tab. Um, this also is helpful because if you use the Give 828 site year round, which you're able to do. That way you don't have to completely refresh your entire organization page every time you go into event uh, mode. So this is an idea. Um, and then, of course, also adding metrics at the top. Uh, you have the option to decide what this bar looks like. We always recommend adding a goal bar. So this is the example with the filled out goal bar. Um, you can see uh, the goal for the event, how many dollars have come in, how many donors have given, so you can customize how you want that flow to look as well. Um, your fundraise button is also very important. This is the actual button people will click when they want to peer-to-peer -peer fundraise for you. Uh, you have the option to toggle that on and off. Um, I recommend keeping it on just so that people know that they can fundraise and that you're open to having peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers during the event. Um, so getting into really telling your story, when you're thinking about kind of what information you want to add to your about section or your custom tab, uh, as you're preparing for Give 828, think about your, I'm going to say it over and over, but what are your goals for participation? Do you have a dollar goal? Do you have a goal that's non-monetary? Um, like, uh, you know, do you want to get 20 new donors during this year's event? Think about all the goals and what messaging you want to add to this page. Um, and also, in a nutshell, why should somebody support you? What are, what do you do for the community? Um, let them know exactly what you do and why they should support you. Editing is super simple. It's all inline editing, so you can bold things, you can color code things, you can add images, um, all directly on the page, and you can see it in real time. So you'll know exactly what the donor sees because you're seeing it as you create it. Um, add images, add video. We all know images are so engaging. Uh, people really love to see, I mean, obviously these are kittens, but people want to see what you do. They want to see, you know, behind the scenes. They want to see what it takes to operate your organization. Um, also, like I was saying, custom tab. What could you do here? You could put project areas. Um, you could talk about your fundraising goals. You could break down what it takes to run uh, your, you know, your organization during the year. You could also add testimonials. Those are incredibly helpful when it comes to donors. They like to see that other people already support you. Um, and I'm sure you have people who support you. You could have testimonials from your board members, from your volunteers. Maybe you, you know, one day when you're at the office or something, you can ask people if they could do a 30 second video with you just so that you can start to create this content. Um, for your page. And then, of course, just make a strong appeal um, why people should support you. 
Um, on your organization page, there's just a bunch of other optional sections you can include, such as featured campaigns. So you can highlight a specific peer-to-peer uh, -peer campaign. Um, you can also toggle on your giving activity. Um, that is new this year, actually, which is very exciting. So you can toggle on that feed and it will show in real time donors who are giving to your organization. Uh, it adds kind of you know, an engagement element to your page. Uh, it'll honor whatever the donor has required within the checkout process as far as um, being anonymous. So if they choose to hide their donation value, it'll say you know, just their name. If they choose to be anonymous but show their value, it'll say anonymous gave you know, $50, $25. Um, so you can toggle that on. That's a manual tog toggle on your end. Um, and you can also add supporting campaigns, which is really nice. Um, so you can, if you have a bunch of peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers uh, this year, then you can showcase them uh, and hopefully, you know, encourage support to their pages as well, because we'll kind of talk about this more at the second webinar, but peer-to-peer -peer campaigns, that just helps you raise more and helps you reach more donors. Everything your peer-to-peer -peer pages are raising goes directly to your organization and gets directly added to your leaderboards. Um, a couple other new additional sections, we added programs and governance this year for you all. Um, so programs is a really cool way to highlight different areas uh, of work that you do for your organization. So this is example is continuing on uh, the Animal Humane Society, but they do a kitten, kids and kittens day camp. What kind of, you know, programs do you do? Do you go do work in schools? Do you have, um, you know, volunteer programs that people can participate in? This is just a great way to add additional content, additional engagement to your page. Um, and then we also have a governance section where you can add data about your board members. Um, so two optional sections that you can add, uh, but the more information that you add to your page, the more complete it feels, the more engaged you look uh, during the giving event, which is going to then, you know, tell the donor that you're, uh, you mean business pretty much, and they want to support you. Um, once your page is set up, so a couple other things to start to think about. Obviously, filling out your organization page is going to be the first key thing to do, um, but then you'll want to start to think about the actual fundraising process. So you'll want to think about the fundraising tools, and on the Mighty Cause platform, we offer uh, a bunch of different fundraising tools. So a couple here, matching grants, peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising, and widgets. Um, matching grants, um, I'll get to that in a second, but uh, actually, I'll keep going. So. Then you'll also want to customize your checkout flow, and then you can review your reporting. We have disbursements reports to you for you, um, which you you know includes all your donor data, um, so you can do follow ups, thank yous, stuff like that, and then also retention reports. So if you are a previous participant, you can go in uh, and you can pull that information: who has given last year, who hasn't given this year. You want to work that into your strategy, especially on the live event. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. And then there's additional settings. So um, editing your checkout flow. This Once your page is set up, head straight to your checkout flow. Uh, this is where you can really customize it so that it reflects like your organization. So you're able to add different levels, um, suggested donations, um, and show the impact of each value, which is really helpful, especially when it comes to donors who, one, might not know what it takes to do certain things, so they haven't totally figured out like what's valuable to you, what amount they should give. Um, also, it can easily sway a donor who might think, oh, I'm gonna give, you know, 10 bucks. Oh, wait, I can, you know, vaccinate two rescue dogs. I'm gonna give 30, that sounds so cool. Um, so definitely take the time to customize these fields. We recommend between four and six options, uh, nothing too overwhelming for the donor. Sometimes too many options actually, you know, makes people, you know, not really know what to do. So definitely between four and six is the best sweet spot. Um, and then you can also customize your thank you page um, and just overall preview the whole checkout flow. What's really nice on Mighty Cause is that what you see is what the donor sees in real time. So you can kind of experience what the donor is experiencing, uh, which helps you make a stronger design. 
Um, your post checkout is going to be important. Their thank you page is what people are going to see as soon as they click donate to your organization. So once they've completed their gift, this page is going to pop up on the site. Um, and this is your chance to quickly thank them immediately. So you can add video, you can add photos, you can, you know, have a message from uh, your board. Maybe they all, you know, at one of their meetings, they can all record a thank you message. Um, but definitely add something here and add a little personal touch to it. You also have the opportunity to add a button. So if you wanted to add, uh, offer them the opportunity to get added to your email list, they could do that. Uh, um, or just direct them, you know, to your website for more information. Um, matching grants, very easy to set up. Uh, there's a lot of different options when it comes to it, but definitely add this to your list of things to start to consider. Um, you can secure, you're going to secure your own matching grant for the event if you want to, um, and you can display all of the details. You can set it up so that it's timed to do like a certain hour. Maybe you have a lunchtime grant, um, but it's very easy set up. It's found under your fundraising tools, matching grants. Um, this match is going to show on your donate button when it's live, so you can see donate one match live. Uh, and you'll also donors will be able to find and search for organizations that have live matches during the event by just going to the search and filtering by live matches. Um, so if you have any questions on setup for that, we will go into more details on the next webinar. Um, and then the other kind of key feature tool I want to highlight is peer to peer fundraising. Um, so peer to peer fundraising, very, very valuable and useful um, during the giving event, this is the opportunity for you to rally your supporters. Um, board members great people to ask to peer to peer fundraise for you, uh, but the setup is found under your fundraising tools as well. Uh, campaigns this button is going to show you all the campaigns if you participated last year go to your campaigns see if they're still relevant, you can also hide. Uh, toggle discoverability on campaigns that are no longer being used. So you can kind of clean up whatever campaigns you have for this year's search. Um, and then fundraiser templates, definitely fill out a fundraiser template, especially if you are going to be doing peer to peer fundraising. This, you know, helps people who are your supporters. Uh, it provides them basically a template to start from and templates just it's so much easier to start from a template than looking at a blank page. You can add a goal for your organiz for your supporters to fundraise. Um, you can kind of streamline the naming process. So if you want all your peer to peer fundraisers to look the same, you can do that. Uh, you can add images, you can add your logo, you can also add your mission statement. Um, so whatever information you find useful on a peer to peer fundraiser page, definitely add that. Uh, your supporters will be very thankful that they don't have to start from complete scratch. Um, and then your reports is going to be a key area. Uh, you'll also be in and out of reports all the time. Um, any admins for your organization are going to receive email notifications when a donation is made. So if you don't want to get notifications every time you receive a gift, you can always um, update that within your settings on your user account. Um, but it is critical to also make sure somebody is receiving those notifications because you'll want somebody to be doing outreach. Um, if not on the day of thanking donors, definitely after. So you can pull your full donor report after the event. Um, or if you want to see, you know, who gave to you last year or during early giving, you can pull this report at any time. But it's going to show you donor data in real time. You can download the full details, um, name, email, that type of thing. Uh, if you want to collect phone numbers, you're going to want to make sure you add a, an additional section to your checkout process to collect that data. Um, we do not automatically collect, collect phone numbers, so definitely add that section if your organization prefers to do more calls for thank yous. Um, and then, let's see, uh, funds disbursement. Um, I'm going to talk about disbursements probably later, but this section is also available to you. Um, when you start to get disbursements, you're going to start to be able to click in and see the full information within that disbursement. Um, you'll get disbursements twice monthly if you're set up for EFT, which is why we put it under the required slash highly recommended. Um, or you'll get it once monthly if via check and checks also incur a $5 uh, fee, so just be aware of that. 
um, and you can you know download all details uh, from there. Retention reports is also available. I've said it a couple times, but this is going to be very important um, to work into your strategy. Uh, if you were a previous participant, so you can see who gave, who hasn't gave this year, that's going to be a, a very important set of data, set of emails that you can send out during the live event. Um, something as simple as, hey, there's you know five hours left of Give828. You donated to our campaign last year. Here's what we're trying to accomplish this year. Donate now. Um, retention report, you can easily filter by the exact giving day. So you can uh, filter by Give828 2022 or even Give828 2021 if you wanted to pull that data set as well. Um, additional settings, you can add or remove admins. Um, if somebody used to work on your campaign and is no longer there, you can remove them. Um, you can update your legal address, set up your EFTs, and also customize your social share and your URL. So if you're brand new, um, most likely if you've previously participated, you've already updated the URL. Um, but if you're new, you can still do that. Uh, and then, of course, customize your social share. You want to let them know maybe you have, you know, a 2023 picture that you want to be added when someone clicks to social to share your page to socials. So you can update that here as well. Um, and then I wanted to touch on all of the wonderful resources and the support that you have access to. Um, Give 28 we have a bunch of resources within the nonprofit toolkit. You can see all the training webinars from last year, um, which is, you know, obviously the dates and the information is, is different this year, um, but you can still definitely pull valuable bits of campaign strategies, tips and tools and tricks out of those. Uh, we also have a donor toolkit, which is really exciting. This is something that you can also share for your supporters. Um, so if you have an email going out to supporters, especially if you're asking them to peer to peer fundraise for you, send them the donor toolkit. It comes with their own toolkit filled with, um, you know, social media kind of templates and stuff like that. Um, the more you can provide to your supporters for peer to peer fundraising, the easier time they're going to have, which hopefully will result in more dollars and more donors for you. Um, and then, of course, make sure you sign up for our webinar trainings. Um, the next one that we have coming up is all about campaign strategy. We'll provide tips for you. Um, and we're also going to talk about how uh, you can kind of curate a strong message. So it's always going to come back to what is the message you're trying to deliver the stronger the better. Donors need to have clear, concise messaging to know what you want from them. Uh, but that's on August 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can register under training webinars. Um, and of course, review the FAQs. This is a bunch of stuff that you can just copy and paste into any emails if people are asking you questions, if your board is asking you questions. Um, definitely use those. Uh, we also have great support resources in the Mighty Cause support libraries. Um, we also have blog posts. We have on-demand webinars. Um, we have one all about just matching grants. So if that's a goal for you this year, uh, check out that webinar at the Resource Center. Um, that's under mightycause.com slash guide. Um, and then, of course, you are welcome to always email the Mighty Cause support team if you have any questions, if you want to set up a matching grant, but you are confused about the settings, reach out to our team. They're available to you Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 Eastern. Um, and I also will mention, uh, I didn't add it here, but we are going to start sending out weekly emails to those organizations that are registered and approved for the event. You get one email a week, um, and it's going to have different tips and strategies and to-do lists for you to make sure that you stay, um, you know, set to a timeline so that you can make sure you're prepared for Give 28 this year. Um, but let's see if we have any questions. If you do have questions, you can start to send them through. I'm seeing a couple. Um, let's see what we have. Uh, yes, we are going to be recording. This is recorded, so we are going to be sharing it um, in the toolkit that you can access on the Give 28 website and share directly with whoever you would like. Um, Uh, we have a question, can this be done in addition to a fundraiser we are already doing? Um, I will say 
that depends. Um, so Give28 uses its own website, give828.org. So all fundraising really needs to happen on Give828, especially if you want to be eligible for prizes. Um, gifts raised on other platforms wouldn't count towards those prizes. Um, there's another question. I don't see any other questions, but if you all want to take a second, um, you can start to send those over. Um, I see a question I was asking, will anyone else be promoting Give 828 besides us? Meaning the nonprofits? Um, um, we will be, um, as a team, as a um, YVGB team, we are doing um, heavy promotion. Um, we're doing a lot of it on Instagram. Um, we have a wonderful uh, intern, um, I'm sorry, social media strategist. Uh, Devin is doing a wonderful job. They just um, started the TikTok channel for us. Um, but largely we are doing our promotion um, through our partners um, as well as Instagram. We do post every now and again on Facebook um, and also using LinkedIn, but we do. And we also have our internal um, listserv that goes to about um, almost 3,000 subscribers. So we do a, a great bit of promoting the day. We don't promote individual organizations per se. We sometimes we're doing like random highlights of those who are registered. So if you're registered, you may randomly select your organization. Um, and then we have some organizations that have uh, participated um, previously for a number of years um, that, we, um, that we've asked sort of share their experience to kind of help some of the newer organizations. So to answer your question, yes, we will be promoting the day, um, but we leave it up to you all to, to be able to share and promote your individual organizations. Um, I didn't see any other questions, but I do want to give everyone time to think. Um, so if there's anything else you want to add to it, Ebony, let me know. Uh, no, I, I um, alluded to this a little bit earlier. Um, our focus this year, uh, while you know the day is, is wonderful and it's great to, to fundraise, um, we have um, noticed that a lot of our organizations may not engage with or pick back up with their donors. And that's not um, unusual for a lot of organizations, especially smaller ones. So we thought a lot about donor retention and being able to um, provide you all with, um, with the skills um, to help retain some of the donors and engage with them after Give 828. So with one of the uh, webinars that we have coming up, we'll be talking about, um, we'll be talking about that um, in my, my day job. I actually, um, I do nonprofit um, education at the University of Maryland um, and I also do consulting. So um, again, realizing that engagement or lack thereof sometimes with um, giving days uh, can be um, short-sighted. We wanna make sure that, uh, that we set you all up and provide you with the tools um, and get strategies started to be able to engage beyond the day. There's two more questions. One probably for you, Ebony. It says, can we newbies hear from some of the organizations that have already participated or see who would be willing to mentor newer organizations? Yeah, so um, I don't know if, um, I don't see, Sydney on here from iFly. Um, she's one of our our regulars. Um, I don't recognize all of the names on here, but do we have any organizations that have participated for more than let's say two years? 
Uh, I wouldn't know. I need to pull up a list. Oh no, I'm just looking at the participants. So if you if you've participated and given H28 for more than two years, just throw yourself in the chat and let's see. Um, we do have um, some promotional um, videos that we're going to share uh, from some of our organizations that have participated uh, a number of times. Um, and we have a series that is getting ready to start um, an Instagram live series where we're going to have some of our organizations that have participated before um, to be able to talk about their experiences. So, um, you know, we're going to do the best that we can to make sure that the new folks, that's also my two year olds. Um, to be able to welcome you all uh, and engage uh, and make the day the best that it that it can be. But if you have specific questions, um, you know, I'm happy to answer them the best that, that I can. Um, and then yes, if you are having, um, you know, any troubles with the platform, getting logos to show, banner images, anything like that, reach out to support at mightycause.com. They can help you uh, get it sorted out. Um, I see that, um, hey, Mickey, um, know the name, but nice to meet, um, nice to meet you um, again. And she says that she's participated for years. Um, is it possible to perhaps maybe promote her to a panelist if there's anything that specifically that you might want to share yeah, um, with our is, newbies about your experience? What is it's, the name um, of Vicky, Vicky Guy. Vicky Guy, okay. Yeah. Okay, you're out of Vicky. Hey, Vicki, thank you so much. Um, yeah, can you just share with some of our new folks what your experience has been, maybe, maybe one or two best practices, what has worked for you all? Sure. Um, the organization has done, uh, you know, the MHI has done Give 8 to 8 for many years. Um, last year was my first year doing it personally. Um, and I noticed, um, you know, one of the most helpful things I would say is not to be afraid to pick up the phone and ask your local um, organizations for assistance. I mean, Mighty Cause was great. They have a lot of wonderful tools on there. And I think really using the recommended timeline um, was effective in making sure that you're continuing to message throughout the month and building up that momentum, but even the follow up afterwards, because um, there's an additional fundraising period after the main event. Um, that allows you to promote, you know, your event and, and how you participated in 8 to 8. Um, so some of the helpful tips I would recommend is making sure the biggest challenge that we faced was making sure that our profile was up to date. Um, it's very important to make sure that your profile is up to date and approved because if it's not, people aren't going to be able to find your organization to give you donations. Um, so while like Initially, when we first started out, when we were advertising, people would go on to the Give 8 to 8 and they couldn't find our organizational profile and we couldn't figure out why. So we picked up the phone and we called our, our representatives and we had found out that we needed to update our profile. Um, the person that normally had done that within our organization had passed away. So that's kind of why um, it was a learning curve for us. Um, but I would say that that was um, a major point. Make sure your profiles are up to date and then to not be afraid to use the materials because you guys have, um, if you go to give828.org, even um, that you guys make it pretty easy. I find even coming from an advertising background, you guys provide a lot of the creative stuff already. So instead of reinventing the wheel, I would recommend others to, you know, think outside the box, be creative. How can you be different? and use what they have and don't be afraid to customize it to make it your own to you know use the things but um those are the things that i found the most helpful thank you um thank you vicky we are actually um gonna have a um ad hoc session about um uh social media engagement and create and creative and marketing um but what uh vicky is referring to specifically about the creatives is when you go on to Give A20 under resources, there's a social media toolkit. In that toolkit um, are evergreen messages that you can copy and paste and use and make them your own. But we also include um, external 
um, graphics, right? And those graphics are created uh, blank intentionally so that you can download them or upload them. Uh, we recommend using a, a platform like Canva to be able to um, manipulate it however you want. So if you um, download it and then upload it to a platform like Canva or you know uh, any platform that you all might use um, to sort of design, then um, once you uh, upload it, then you can add in your photos, you can add in your logo, you can add in um, whatever it is that you want and to be able to make it your own so you can add you know, pictures and things like that. So um, there are three different versions this year. Our theme is it's giving, um, you know, so like the kids like to say, you know, it's given fashion, it's giving all the things. So this year it's, you know, it's, um, it's giving. And so it's a play on that. So you all can sort of use that to kind of plug and play however it makes sense um, for you and your organization. Um, and also using the hashtag, right? Um, we use that, we repost, we share uh, with, with folks on Instagram. The, the closer we get to the date, the more robust things become. So, um, you know, that is also an outlet. So thank you for, for those tidbits, Vicki. That is I'm greatly appreciated. Anyone else? Let's see. Um, yeah, so I see someone. Um, this, no, thank you. Uh, no, thank you. This um this uh webinar is recorded, so you can always go back um to our anonymous friend that has um that's asked. It's your first year. Don't be nervous. It's fun. Um, if you have your profile up to date and you're sharing, um, just you know, just follow along. I mean, literally everything is provided for you. Um, we'll talk. I think the next webinar, um, Sarah, if I'm not mistaken, we talk about um cash prizes and mm -hmm. how to make the day. Um, you know, how to make the most of the day, if you will. Um, but really, it's, it's, it's a time for you to be able to, to share all the good things that your organization is doing. So don't be nervous. It's fun. We don't want this to be stressful. We want it to be, um, you know, low-hanging fruit. And so um, don't be nervous. Awesome. I'm not seeing any other questions. If anyone does have additional questions, feel free to let us know. Or if you have just, you know, specific platform-related questions, reach out to our support team um they will help you out uh so thank you everyone again for taking time out of your day to join us for our first webinar okay thank you all so much we look forward to engaging and we have at least three more webinars where we'll hopefully talk to all of you again okay. bye everyone hey, all right bye-bye